So it's a good time for me to introduce you to Sarah Blenkinsop, um, who um, I've known for 10 years we worked out, um, which is uh, absolutely bizarre. Um, Sarah owns uh, uh, Golden Frog PR um, up, in the, up in Yorkshire. Um, Sarah, perhaps you'd like to say a few words to, uh, to introduce yourself. Hi there, everyone. Um, yeah, so Matt and I met when we just started our businesses 10 years ago. We've worked very closely together on a lot of projects since. Um, and I run Golden Frog PR, as Matt said, which is a full service PR and marketing agency in North Yorkshire. Um, we service all kinds of clients, um, but essentially we are their entire outsourced marketing department marketing and PR department so we are communicating from uh, for people from business cards right through to writing their websites and entering them for Queen's Awards so um, hopefully we know a few bits about communication wonderful thank you very much uh, Sarah for that yes um, it's uh, I can't quite believe it's been 10 years we've seen <laughs> a lot a lot go on in that time haven't we? That's for sure. <laughs> between us um, so um, I'm going to share my screen now on the uh, on the Zoom screen. So bear with me for one second. And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to take the kind of form um, of a kind of Q and A session here between myself and Sarah. Um, so I'll mute um, I'll mute everybody on the call um, from now on. Um, what I will ask is if, if, if questions pop up along the way, um, just to pop them into the uh, into the chat box, and uh, we will take questions from everybody at the end. Um, so please uh, do write your questions down if you have them, um, but uh, pop them into into the chat box along the way so we can see them and we can we can broach everything um, as we go if we need to. I'm sure there might be some more people jumping on the call as we go as well, which um, I'll admit them as we go through. Um, so presuming that um, you guys can see the screen, um, one other offer here is at the at the end of the webinar um, there'll be uh, an offer for you um, to get a free PDF, which basically covers a lot of the stuff that we've discussed on the call. Um, but as your sort of handy takeaway guide, if you like, to, to what we've discussed, you'll be able to download that e at golden blog PR dash. Um, stay with me. On. And um, we'll crack on, um, uh, Sarah, by first of all asking why we're here today. What, um, what are we doing here and why are we talking about this? So, um, the thing is that now we're entering this new normal, and I'm going to try not to use that phrase too often, but a lot of companies obviously having their staff working from home and the challenges that um, we're seeing inconsistencies in the way that co companies are communicating as a result. Um, most people are familiar with brand guidelines when it comes to the visual side of how a company is portrayed. So usually brand guidelines would um, denote what logo you use, what colors you use, what fonts you use. But quite often companies don't have brand guidelines in terms of how companies speak to their audiences. And that's what we want to talk about today. Um, there is a risk that with offices and companies being spread out that inconsistencies can occur. So hopefully by the end of this, will be arming everybody with the wherewithal to help their staff communicate it with one voice from the company. Great stuff, thank you very much. So in terms of brand guidelines then, um, you know, as with any process, you need a kind of starting point. So uh, what's the best place to start? Well, the way we tend to start is um, by imagining your perfect customer and just thinking of one specific person who you want your company to communicate with. And that by creating this customer profile of who that person is, you allow yourself to talk as if you're talking to one person, but then hopefully with a view to replicating that one ideal client numerous times over. So the key thing really, I think, is to create this customer avatar and we want to give this person a name. We want to know who they are. We want to know where they live. We want to know what they do for fun, how old they are. And all of these things will feed in to creating a, a picture of who we are talking to. And if that, is how, if that is who we speak to every time we write anything or say anything from the company, and everybody who works for that company understands who this person is or who this profile is, 
then you create a consistent voice. So this is the first thing we're going to do. Um, this is all on the PDF, so it's, it can be uh, downloaded at the end, as Matt said. Essentially, the main thing really is we're going to find out who this person is. And then the last three things on the list here, we want to know where they're getting their information. So are they looking at the press? Are they looking at social media? If they're looking at social media, what platforms are they looking at? It's really drilling down into who these people are. Um, what's important to them is obviously, you know, if we, if we can tap into what's important to them, then we're going to nail selling to them. And what do they worry about? And that's pulling on their emotional um, connections. So then we'd move on from there, Sarah, um, to um, how we uh, how we want to reach them, um, what we how we want to present ourselves in the way that um, that we kind of reach the uh, the avatar, if you like, that we've that we've created, and we kind of split this into vocabulary, tone, and uh, and grammar. Yeah. So um, in terms of vocabulary, there will be specific buzzwords that relate to your industry that these this customer profile might relate to um, we want to know whether they want to be spoken to informally or formally we want to look at whether they would expect to be addressed in the third person as in the client or whether we are talking in the first person so whether we're saying we you um, and in terms of grammar, how how do they expect to be? Um, how do they expect to read things? Are they expecting to read things in kind of short, sharp bursts, or do they want full sentences? So all of these things feed into how we deal with that specific communication. Wonderful. Okay, so moving on to the next slide, just so we're saying, what about me and my company? So where where does what I want to say come into it? So okay. We, sorry, go on. <laughs> sorry. So um, as much as you need a profile creating for your ideal customer, you need a profile of your company. Now, quite often, um, I know I'm guilty of this, having set up a business 10 years ago, I had a, a what I wanted to say about who we were back then, but actually being in lockdown and having a bit of time and headspace to think about things, a really good opportunity to do this. So we want to know not only that you are Matt and you're amazing at digital marketing, but we also want to know why, who, who you are, like how you started it off, what, what, how people will relate to you, when people might want to engage with your company, what your mission is, so why are you there? What, what, what did you set out to do? Um, how, how is this upheld by the values of the company? And what stands you aside from the competition? And this may be a very different picture to how it was when you started your business 10 years ago to what it is now. So these questions are things that you need to answer for yourself and then communicate to your staff because actually a lot of people don't do this. So all the staff need to buy in to why you have the company, why you have these messages to tell and what a customer would want to read from you in order to uphold those, those key points about the company. I think that's a really interesting point, Sarah, because I think that um, we take it for granted, I think, sometimes within our businesses that um, that staff um, or, or the people that work are working with us, and that, that probably includes your sort of, you know, partners, suppliers, that kind of stuff, um, that they just naturally assume um, that, um, that, or you take it for granted that they would assume that you will know what you're trying to present or you'll know that the, uh, the image that you're trying to present. Um, but it definitely doesn't hurt, does it, I think, to revisit this uh, every now and again to actually work out what it is you're trying to say, how you're differing um, yourself from, from the, other, the other similar agencies or similar companies um, yep. in the same kind of niches as you. Um, and also um, think about the whys a little bit more as well. Why would, why would somebody want to, to use your business and um, why, um, why do, do we do things the way we do things? We, we kind of perhaps forget to revisit that from time to time, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. And, and what you're doing here, um, not only are you creating 
an opportunity for you to re really reevaluate where you are. You're also creating a kind of induction document. So somebody new starts at your business or somebody comes for an interview. And this really allows you to formulate a kind of elevator pitch to say to them, right, this is, this is who we are, what we stand for and why we do it. And this is why we're brilliant at it. And this is why you should join us or this is why you should work with us. So it cuts across all different facets of the business and, and forms a backbone of absolutely everything, really. Fabulous. Okay, so let's go to an example then. So my customer, my potential customer, um, is a forward-thinking estate agent targeting young professionals with house sales. How would we go about creating our brand voice um, to, uh, to target um, this specific, uh, specific customer? Okay, so you're looking at um, creating this avatar, who they are. So I always quite like to give them a name. Um, I think we call this, let's call this chap James. So he is a, a young professional. He's been saving up a deposit. Um, he's ideally in a rental property or living with his parents, which is an estate agent's dream because he'll be able to jump when, he's, when they say how high. Uh, what what does he do for fun? So he goes to the gym, he goes out to eat. How old is he? Somewhere between 25 and 35. Um, he's engaged to Susan, who's a lovely girl, and she also likes going to the gym and going to restaurants. <laughs> um, their income, this is where we come to the ideal. So if I'm an estate agent selling a Bear in mind, I live in Yorkshire, so the prices are cheaper. But if I'm selling a £300,000 house and the ideal customer has a 20% deposit and you've got to basically get three times your salary as a... Um, three times your salary as a mortgage, James needs to be earning £80,000 a year. So where does James get his information? He gets it from social media. The great thing about platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on, are that you can actually target James very specifically with that income if you want to. Uh, what's important to him is getting on the property ladder, but he's very worried generally about money, about making the right decision, about his aging parents, and about his future or kids, you know, Susan is not pregnant right now, but she might be in the future. So we're, we're looking at all of these things. And what we've done then is create this vision of who this person is that we're talking to. You can almost sort of picture him and think, right, okay, James, I'm telling you that this is what you need to hear. So that's the, that's the start. Um, so yeah, moving on to, to the, the next question, is there really was once we've yeah. thought about that, what does it mean in terms of uh, in terms of communication? What I've done here is I've I've kind of put this table up on, on the next slide, which again appears in the um in the document um, that can be downloaded, but a good way of breaking up, like you know, if we're going to communicate to this person, um, these are the methods that we're going to use to communicate, what kind of vocabulary we're we going to use, and what kind of tone um are we um are we going to use to this uh, specific avatar that we've now created okay so your specific avatar um he is somebody who has been busting a gut to save up his deposit he is doing really well in his career but what he doesn't have is a lot of time so he doesn't want to read war and peace when you send him an email um he's probably quite used to reading things which are short sharp punchy if you speak to him on the phone, it's fine to be kind of informal with him, but he doesn't want to be there for long. Um, so I think the key thing with him is to create these messages and make them short, sharp, punchy, engaging, and then put, reflect everything that you're saying in, for example, a social media post onto your website in a similar tone and a similar language. What you don't want to do is to put a, a kind of cool and funky uh, thing about how your estate agency has partnered with a local personal trainer to deliver um, training to people like James and then on your website not have any uh, reflection of the fact that you're doing that and have a really formal website. So all of these things are going to feed in. 
Um, he is the customer. He, you are selling direct to him. So you are going to call him you. You are going to say we. You're, um, you are going to try and pull on his emotional heartstrings. So if he's worried about money, how can you help with that? What can you do? Um, can you form partnerships? So you're going to create this vocabulary around the answers to these questions that you think he wants answering. And, and the tone, I think, throughout all of this really is going to be very informal yet respecting who who he is okay fab that's great i think that um yeah absolutely makes so much sense um the uh the the, the fact that you, you need to uh communicate in a way that that they will be most receptive to right and that um and that your your avatar will, will understand and i think that's another really valid point you said there about the, the partnership with the personal trainer or whatever um you know if it's one thing having the wherewithal to form that partnership but how you communicate that partnership to to your uh, to your audience who are going to be most receptive to that partnership, um, I, I see that kind of thing overlooked um, over and over again. I think it's a really really valid point. Um, so something that I know you and I have discussed in the past, Sarah, and that we're both pretty hot on, um, is um, spelling and grammar, um, which um, mm -hmm. is a bugbear of mine um, in, in communications that um, I see time and time again daily. Um, how important do you see um, a spelling and grammar to uh, to the brand voice? So I, I firmly believe that whether you have decided to be formal or informal with your avatar or your client, that everything should be checked uh, over and over again in terms of spelling and grammar, because you don't know who you're actually being received by. And if I see something, I am obviously I skim read and I copy <laughs> I copyright for a living. But if I see something with a misplaced apostrophe or the wrong use of there, there or there, or a, an apostrophe in a plural or something like it, it actually just turns me off that brand. And I know for a fact that I'm not alone. So what we've done in the downloadable PDF is I've created this kind of this grammar framework. And I think everybody who is communicating on behalf of a business should really concentrate on getting things clear in terms of spelling and grammar there is nothing worse than receiving it right so in no term in no regardless of whether I'm communicating with a, a 14 year old or a 90 year old my spelling and grammar has got to be perfect throughout no excuses these days either, um, you know, no. spell check and grammar checks and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And on a similar subject, um, keywords are, are an important part as well, because I, I guess not only are you trying to write um, and communicate in a certain tone and in a certain way and to a certain avatar or person, um, you may as well take the whole Google thing into account as well um, at the same time. Yeah, so I firmly advocate writing for your audience as opposed to writing to go for Google. Uh, Google is is savvy if you're just whacking keywords in for no reason but what I tend to do is have a list of keywords next to me and I'm writing my content and then I'll look at the list of keywords and think if there is any way that they can be included in a logical natural way um, I tend to write the copy first so I'll write it with the avatar in my head um, with the, my vocabulary and tone and grammar framework that I've got in my head for this. And then I'll look at the keywords and think where they could naturally fit in and try and insert some of my high profile ones where possible. But um, I would certainly do it that way round as opposed to looking at the keywords and trying to write the copy around them because it always sounds stilted it, um, and quality content always always wins over keyword rich content i couldn't agree more and uh, it's it's a massive thing now for google that they want you to write for the user and it, google is all about user experience if you write for the user you're not really going to go far wrong um in terms of uh, seo spamming mm. keywords now into um you know content and trying to fit the relevant keyword in as much as possible um it's actually now a surefire way um to to get demoted in the rankings rather than um promoted so it's really great advice i think yeah. 
I think con the content, we all know that content is king. Uh, 100%. And, yeah, quality, quality content is going to engage your audience more. It's going to encourage them to share and therefore, you know, give your, give your content authority in terms of you knowing what you're talking about. And um, yeah, there's just too many people trying to just whack keywords in, writing a thousand words for the sake of it when 400 would do. I just don't agree with it, <laughs> frankly. Yeah, hundred percent. You've got to think about again, and it takes us right back to the avatar. You know, what what what's your audience interested in reading, and what how long are they likely to be engaged for? It's about finding that balance, and um, it's definitely worth consideration. Um, you know, in Google's savvy to this, as you say, that they'll they'll rank uh, a piece of content on that basis. So it's really good. Yeah, it's really good to know. Um, so in terms of getting these brand guidelines and into a into a content plan, um, into my kind of strategy, uh, what's the what's the best way of, of going about that, Sarah? Okay, so we're going to look back to the avatar um, and we're going to work out the platforms that they're using to get their content from. Um, we're going to then create a, a plan which will allow us to communicate across all of the platforms that they're engaging with as well as our own website and or maybe even the press if it's a really good bit of, of content. So what we tend to do is create, um, is create a, an Excel document which has, um, say, Facebook, Instagram, press, web on there and then the different bits of content that we're going to put into each of those. Um, so obviously what you write on social is going to be much shorter, what you write on your website is going to be kind of medium length and then if you're going to do a big old piece of, I don't know, white paper, then obviously that can be a lot longer. But the, um, the platform that you're writing for determines the tone and the voice and the grammar. You know, are we using hashtags, for example? We're not going to in a blog post, but we are going to if we're writing for um, Instagram or LinkedIn. Um, but the, the key thing really, I think, is to look at the worries that we established of our avatar and then find out what content we can create using the right tone and grammar and everything else that play into those worries. So we talked about James. Um, he's, he's not got a lot of time. Uh, but he does enjoy going to the gym and he does enjoy going out to restaurants. So we talked about maybe partnering with things. What we can do then, if we partner with this estate agency, partners with a personal trainer to deliver some kind of benefit to their customers, we can then provide these brand guidelines to that personal trainer and say, this is how we speak to our potential customer. He's also your potential customer. So let's speak in the same voice let's try and unify our communications about this offer and it actually just makes the whole thing a lot stronger so you're in you're providing a service really to to other partners that you're engaging with to help sell your your message good stuff all right well that Sarah that brings us pretty much to the end of um of our presentation um so what I'm going to ask um the guys on the call now to do is if you do want to ask anything if you have any questions that have emerged during the uh the last half an hour or so um to unmute yourself and to uh, and to ask away don't be shy if you have got a question but of course don't feel obliged um it's just we, we, we've got this section in here just in case anybody did want to um to ask us anything not hearing anything from anyone as yet. So I presume that there are no questions um, at the moment. If something does pop into um, your head though, um, then um, please do feel free to email either myself or Sarah. Um, I'm matt at thebrightclick.co.uk. And Sarah, you're um, the best email address for you? It's sarah at goldenfrogpr.co.uk. And just a final reminder here then, um, that if you did want to download the PDF of um, covering the things we've discussed today, plus the, the sort of tables that you can use to, um, to build your, uh, your customer avatar and your, um, your business avatar as well, um, that um, you can do so by going to uh, goldenfrogpr.co.uk forward slash creating hash, uh, sorry, creating hyphen a hyphen brand hyphen voice. Um, and that will get you the um, that will get you the download. Um, and Sarah is also offering um, an opportunity um, once you have downloaded that PDF um, for a, uh, a a strategy kind of consultation. Sarah, if um, if any of the people on the uh, on the call would like that. 
Yeah, sure. I mean, people are very, very welcome to um, to give me a ring if they want to talk through all of this. stuff. A lot of it's, uh, well, it, to me, it seems quite obvious. So I'm more than happy to talk through um, people's strategies for communicating and and look through brand guidelines if, if they would like me to. So feel free to get in touch. Wonderful. That's great stuff. Well, look, thank you, everyone, for joining us on the, the call this afternoon. We've really enjoyed having you here. Um, please do download that PDF and um, please do get in touch with Sarah if you think she can help with uh, with anything. Um, we're going to be running our next webinar um, in a fortnight or so. It's going to be about Facebook ads. So um, if you'd like to jump on and um, have a look at that, then we'll, we'd love to see you there. We'll be sending out some communication about that in the, in the near future. But in the meantime, have a great uh, rest of your day. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Sarah. Really great advice. And uh, look you. forward to, uh, to seeing you guys soon. Take care. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.